Hey guys, this is Wargamer Achilles here, here to help you out with uh, how to save money in 40k. 10 tips. So uh, we'll go ahead and make this fast. First, um, I recommend you get into a gaming community or like a group of guys, um, some kind of group online, but better yet, like a gaming group like in a um, store, a comic store, or something like that. Just get into a gaming group or a community. Um, they a lot of times people are giving away stuff like for free like um I knew a guy when I was starting an army he just gave me like 10 marines um just because he's just like here you go man I don't need them they're just marines and I was like sweet um or like sometimes a lot of people before they sell things on eBay they will promote within the group or within the community so you can actually save a lot of money just buying used units um, also, um, some stores, like um, some specific like tabletop stores, actually have bits bins at the store, where uh, you literally can like dig, like elbow deep through like loads and loads of like expended miniatures, and sometimes you can put to, you can find all the pieces to build your dude. Um, one time I had my son. I told him while I was playing a game there, I said, hey man, why don't you dig in the bits bin and just grab as many Space Marine pieces you can find. He came up with like literally $50 worth of merchandise, but since it's from the bits bin, we only paid like 8 bucks, And we I think we walked away with a full tactical squad and some Terminators and stuff like that. So always be like in those bits bins if you can, if you're really, really trying to save money. Um, also trading with the community is really cool too because you can actually like just trade things some guys are just like I'm sick of playing blood angels or I'm sick of playing orcs I just want to like get something different or I just want a specific thing but I'll trade a few of my extras so trading is like big too also eBay uh, eBay is cool if you have the patience that is um, a lot of times eBay Sometimes eBay shipments come quick, sometimes they don't, sometimes there's hiatus. So really, it's all about patience with eBay. Um, but if you can't wait, then just buy the damn thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, eBay is sweet. Like, get your bids in, you know, find things on the auctions, you know, and just try to, like, catch it when there's, like, only a minute left. <laughs> you know, place that bid when there's 10 seconds, you know. Um, and sometimes you can, like, run away for, like, I ran away with uh, new inbox terminators for, like, eight bucks you know with shipping and everything so I mean that's freaking sweet right you can also get a, a faction starter set I recommend them as well um, if you want to especially you just want to start a new army or you just want to I don't know you just you just want more of something but you don't not really sure what you want but you just want to like kind of save money get the faction starter sets they're really sweet um, and if you can get them through eBay, they're even sweeter because uh, you're already saving money with the starter set, let alone on top of it, you getting it from some, you know, other guy online on eBay or something. Um, also, the Battle of Vidros set that came out with Space Marines versus Orcs, that's sweet if you wanted to be uh, introduced that to somebody um, who wants to play 40k and... You know, they don't mind being Space Marines. They don't mind being Orcs. I mean, that's a great way to just be like, it's like cheap. Um, I think it's like 40 bucks or 50 bucks and you get like a starter set. That's like one of the cheapest starter sets. Like you grab it, you play it, you're good to go. Also, what I like to do, um, I like to save my bits and organize all my bits. Um, so whenever I build my army, I always have a bunch of extra stuff like weapons, equipment, heads, um, shoulder pads, all kinds of extra stuff, save it and organize it. And I mean, take it off the sprues, like go ahead and just take it off the sprues, find one of these organizers. Um, I mean, they sell them dirt cheap and you could just like put all the heads in this slot, all the shoulders in that slot. Next thing you know, you start creating this collection of bits and pieces of your own. And honestly, you can just buy bits online, like legs or torso or heads and then you have everything else to make a marine um so you could like find ways to do that or just you know it's just a good thing to use um also i i screwed around with some bits as well i actually created tanks with my bits 
I'll tell you more about that later. Oh yeah, that's what, that's actually what's next is build your own units. Um, this is if you really want to be cheap and you don't want to be competitive and you're playing with people who are cool, really cool, and they're just like you know they're down for anything. Um, what I ended up doing is I used extra bits from my army and I glued them to my army tanks like those World War II plastic army tanks now the army tanks I had were actually the same like length and width of a rhino hull pretty much they're just not as tall so technically it is does have a lot of the same form um dimensions except height so you can't really hide guys behind it but it was great because I just glued some last cannons on that thing <laughs> like primed it blue put an ultramarine logo on it and it's a freaking it's a predator tank okay um of course I don't always play like that as a standard way I mean I just do that if I'm really playing with a bunch of guys and I want to try something crazy or doing a special mission or something like that and you know I what if I don't have enough stuff you know get creative use some out of 40k stuff you know you could find all kinds of things like army plastic tanks you know those are always laying around shoot might as well rig it up you know I even glued a storm bolter on the top of that sucker so um also for tools um a lot of people they like to spend loads of money buying like all these specific tools to like you know do just to get the models off the sprues and just to you know sculpt the models but really um a toolbox usually <laughs> was what i had at the beginning um i literally just had a toolbox and it had basic stuff it had pliers in it so i was able to ply the stuff off the sprues it had a box cutter in it too so i could actually like uh shave off some mold lines or any kind of extra stuff like that um later i ended up getting a um an exacto knife instead because the exacto knife was better than the box cutter i ended up stabbing myself with a box cutter <laughs> more often than uh, the exacto knife but um yeah i mean there's other ways to save money in 40k and you don't have to always like buy what they're telling you to buy um and also for glue um super glue i never bought i mean my first my first time i actually bought citadel glue but then i realized this stuff's expensive man so um i looked around and i just ended up using loctite glue also loctite glue they have like a super gel i mean super glue and then they have like gel kind and i actually found the gel a little easier for my marines to put like on their wrists and stuff so i can actually like get these really cool poses um, so yeah, I, I just find other kinds of super glue other than the ones they offer because really you could find stuff way cheaper. Um, okay, now next paints and brushes Citadel, Vallejo, P3. Buy a little at a time, don't screw around with these. Okay, um, do not buy cheap paint because I've done it, I've wasted like money doing it. Because I'm, I'm the kind of guy that's kind of like the frugal gamer. Like, I'm like, I'm getting into something. I want to have fun with it. I've been following 40K, the video game, for like over a decade. And I want to play tabletop. So I ended up trying to cut a lot of angles to like try to save money. Because I'm not the richest man in the world. But um, seriously, what ended up biting me in the ass was paints and brushes. Um... I recommend you actually buy high quality brushes you buy those high quality paints I recommend Citadel paints for 40k period um, Reaper paints are good too but honestly there's just some awesome shades Citadel has and really you just can't go wrong plus with the tutorials they have to paint you just literally have to copy what they say you know, and then you don't have to do exactly what they say. You could choose your own style or you could choose your own colors and stuff like that, but just like get some of the fundamentals um, with the way they base things with layers and paints, and your models will look 10 times better. A lot of the times with paints, though, if you get really bad paint, the pigmentation level is like really di is different than miniature painting. Um, a lot of times you just get regular, like, um, acrylic paints, and the pigments are actually like bigger or I don't know 
there's just not as many per droplet so you're not having a lot of density of color so you can't tell it right away when you're slapping that paint on but like later down the line like a week month or two months later three months later your models start cracking looking like crap and you're like what happened and obviously you use bad paint okay you have your army I got my army I'm kicking ass you know I got this awesome collection I got them painted I got I'm saving all this money Achilles you know now here's the biggest thing is how am I gonna transport them to the battlefield um, this is so funny I, I just find this hilarious because I've seen guys spend hundreds of dollars on shit um, just to get their shit to the battlefield and I mean like whatever army they have um, so <laughs> I actually I've seen ingenious guys pull some awesome stuff, and I've seen guys just try to spend more money just to make things work. So we're going to kind of go over that for a little bit. Um, overall, I've seen guys have plastic bins. They bought plastic bins, and that that's cool. That that's that's fine. But they and they also like put like they get buy sheet metal, then they buy magnets. And then they glue those magnets on their models and then put them in the plastic container with the sheet metal. Um, honestly, uh, it sounds like a good idea, but you're ended up spending more money doing that. Um, especially if you're a Space Marine player, you don't need to spend all that money just to have your guys, you know, <laughs> standing straight up in a plastic container. Of course, it's a lot cheaper than paying for the Citadel bags that are like over 100 bucks or something like that. But you don't need to do that. Um I've seen shoe boxes, okay? Shoe boxes are great for drop pods. Um like if you have drop pods and you just need to put them in some things, honestly, you don't want to just stash them in your backpack, but they're great like just throwing them in a shoe box. Um they're big enough, they're bulky enough, they're not going to break. And if they do, it's whatever, man. They're drop pods. Um, but don't put, throw your regular models in a shoebox. Probably when you're starting off, when you only have like 10 models. Um, yeah. I've seen a guy do this awesome thing with pizza boxes. Now, this takes a lot of work, but um, he ended up, you know, he loves pizza, like all the time. And uh, he'd been collecting pizza boxes, <laughs> and he ended up, like, cutting the cardboard out into making his own grid squares for his Tyranids. And um, it was holding, like, all of his Hormigons, and he had, like, it was done really well, <laughs> you know. Um, I've also seen um, a guy, he had this huge, huge plastic bin, and he put one of these bed foam things inside and just literally like laid his whole Necron army in the bin um and that was sweet because he just brings one big ass thing and it has all of his Necrons in there and they're all just like laying on a bed in the back in the plastic bin and that hey if that works for him great um personally me though this is what I like to do I like to use I like to try to find a way I don't have to spend a damn thing um, so what I ended up doing is I found out my son has a Hot Wheels um, little, you know, how Hot Wheels have their little uh, car slots. Do you put your cars in that your kids never put the kit, put the cars in there? But, you, you know, you never did it either. Um, but they're literally like these things designed to hold your cars so you, you don't step on them. Well, anyway, I said, holy shit, he's not using this damn thing. How many Marines can I fit in there? So I ended up opening it up and I... I I was able to fit 10 Marines in this box, like in one of the slots in this box. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And then I, next thing you know, I have all my infantry in there. Um, not a single model has been broken. Um, I found it at Toys R Us and um, it was like $15. Get the monster truck one, especially if you're Marines, because the other ones are a little too small. But if you get the monster truck Hot Wheel boxes, you're good to go. And it's fifteen dollars, and that's fifteen dollars, and you can it could hold all of your infantry, man. I swear, <laughs> unless you have like a crap load, then you know. Obviously, if you're bringing the whole army, then you know. Um, and don't get worried about that whole Hot Wheel thing on the top because you can actually remove the top piece, and I put my own Ultramarine sticker on the top, so I'm like feeling all extra cool. So everybody's not like, oh, he's using a Hot Wheels box. 
Um, yeah. Also for uh, counters, if you're going to um, buy those things that count for marker lights or wounds, some guys use other dice and other colored dice, and that's fine. I have nothing against that. But like, you could also use things that you already might have, like stones. Well, not like just any rocks you pick up off the ground, but if anyone did any arts and crafts stuff around your house and you have just these like fake little stones or little jewels or little whatever, um, you could use those to count for things. You could also use poker chips, you know, coins. Use whatever you can, man. It's really creative, and it, you don't want too much of your money going just to play the damn game because playing the game should be free, and you don't want to spend all this extra money just to hold the game up. Um, also, here's another thing, the most important thing that I recommend. It, it takes a lot of discipline, and it just takes a lot of commitment, but try this, and you won't be one of those guys spending thousands of dollars on 40K. Well, you probably might spend thousands of dollars anyway, but it'll slow you down. Paint all of your stuff first before branching out to other armies and codexes if you at least get to 90 percent of your models done you're good to branch out and start buying a bunch of other stuff try to paint all of your stuff before you branch out to another army because you don't want to be one of those guys that have like half or more of his army unpainted and he, ha you have many armies unpainted. No one wants to go against someone who's unpainted, man. You want your stuff to be painted. Paint it or hire someone to paint it. But have that slow you down. Save money, you know. <laughs> so if you can, you want to buy the new Death Watch, you want to buy um, those, you know, Centurion Devastators. You know, paint your army first paint your army first that will say, keep you to save money and it'll remind you that you still have uh, models that require attention before you get more all right this is achilles signing out